Hi, my name is Stephen Edwards. I'm the director of music and worship. And um, when Mike asked the staff to talk about grace, I um, I kind of had to sit back and and rethink because the way I understood grace growing up and the way I understand grace now are completely different things. As you can imagine what you would expect to hear from the director of music is Amazing Grace, the hymn. So I thought that um, I would read you the text to Amazing Grace and maybe give my two cents on what I think about it um, and how I interpreted it when I was growing up as compared to how I interpret it now. So I'll sing the first verse and then I'm just gonna read the other ones. Um, I've been talking a lot today, so I don't wanna sing too much. But anyway, as you all know, and I don't want you to get caught up in the nostalgia of the tune, because sometimes when we get caught up in a tune, we don't really listen to the text. And sometimes when we listen to the tune, we really listen to the text. Anyway, whichever one you are, you're gonna get the tune and the text. All right, so first verse. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. The second verse. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we'd first begun. Growing up, I believed that there was absolutely nothing that I could do to merit the love and favor of God. That I was the world's worst sinner, not worthy of love. That so impacted me that I became one of the biggest pleasers in the world. Um, I spent years in therapy working on this aspect of pleasing others, searching for others to love me because I didn't feel like I was worthy. And it was so ingrained in me and uh, my world that because we are so unworthy and pathetic, that the only thing that can save us is the grace of God. And so when I would sing this verse, first verse of Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me, in some, uh, in some different variations of this, it'll say worm as me. I took that so seriously to the nth degree that I thought that there was nothing about me that was worthy. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. And then it goes on, "'Twas grace that taught my heart to fear." Hmm. And grace, my fears relieved. So the thing that teaches me to fear is the same thing that relieves my fears. Interesting. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Now, I believe Bromley is talking about prevenient grace. and I'll let Bromley, she'll do a better job explaining it than me. But this says that grace doesn't appear until you believe. So that ain't prevenient grace. And that's very unmethodist of this hymn. 
Um, now let me talk a little bit about where I come to know. We only have 10 minutes and I could talk about this stuff for a real long time because I got a lot of opinions on it. Um, as I've grown, I, I don't necessarily think of grace in terms of prevenient grace. I think of grace almost in terms of an energy that is instantaneously and always throughout the universe, always moving and stirring in people. Um, the other morning, I, maybe you're like me, I wake up like at 3.30 in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, and that's when all, of, you know, it's like all my ideas and all the things that I have to get done start to come into place. But I wrote this, um, oh, 4.27 in the morning. I said, grace is a creative force surging throughout the universe that draws us into relationship or oneness with the creator. Um, so in a way that is prevenient grace, it's always there and it's urging, it comes before, but it is always in existence. I said, some are awake and heed grace's calling. So some of us uh, sense it, some of us feel it. Um, whether we feel it or sense it or not, it is there and it is moving and working in our lives, whether we acknowledge its work or not. I said, others search and work hard to find or discover it, which makes it really hard because I think one of the things to experience grace and to allow grace in is to release and accept it. Other people ride its waves and seem to be at one with it. It's not fair. <laughs> like they just got it. They're just riding on it. Mm -mm. I mean, some of us try and pretend, but. And then there's others that never acknowledge it. I say, grace is deeper than the ocean and smaller than a grain of sand. It is absolutely everywhere. It is easy to resist, and it is hard to resist. And then I wrote this, and this got me thinking, when grace holds us accountable, it is no longer grace because grace flows without condition. If grace flows without condition, that means no matter who you are, grace is there for you. If we go back to the first part of Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. My theology professor um, at Truett Seminary said that we were talking about original sin and how are we born bad? Are we born good? Are we born into sin? Do we come into sin? And he said something that stuck with me. He said, God don't create no junk. And that said a lot to me as someone who felt like I was this worthless piece of nothing that didn't deserve the love and grace of God. But then that, that definition of grace being the unmerited favor of God is like, oh, I can be a wretch, but I, grace is grace because it's unmerited. Got it. But then if God don't create no junk, then I'm not a wretch. I'm a child of God. I am the beloved of God. So is grace saving me from myself or is grace calling me to something else? I wrote here that grace can change us when we let it. But here's where I'm going with that. I think that grace calls us to become the authentic expressions of who we are created to be without condition, without judgment. So grace doesn't call us from being bad people to save people. We are saved people, we are children of God. God loves us as we are for who we are. I believe that when we allow grace to flow into our lives, that that grace calls us to be the authentic expressions of who we are created to be. That can be hard. 
society puts a lot of pressure on us. My upbringing told me that the essence of who I am is a sin, as a person, a wretch. And then as I grew up and realized that I'm gay, that made it worse in a way. My theology professor said, God don't create no junk. And I remember being in seminary and going through the process of coming out and realizing who I am at 24, 25 years old. Um, throughout high school and college, I'm real outgoing and I'm real fun and I love people and I love making people happy and I want people to like me and I want to like people and I want to be together and things are wonderful. But throughout high school and uh, undergraduate, I would go into extreme depression. I, would, I remember sitting in the shower, sitting in the shower, letting the water hit me and being so sad and crying out to God, not understanding what was wrong with me. I had given my life to Christ. I had done all the right things. I had memorized all the scripture. I had um, taught Sunday school and I was working in the church and I read my Bible and I prayed every single day and I was so depressed. And then I went to seminary and my professor said, God don't create no junk. And I had another professor of Old Testament who told me to read the Old Testament for what it says and not for what I was taught it says. And grace was calling. Grace was calling me to be the authentic expression of who I was created to be. On October the 25th in the year 2000, I remember waking up, looking in the mirror and saying, you're gay and God created you this way and it's okay. Grace called me to that authenticity when I said it out loud, all of that depression lifted. And I haven't had that same kind of experience since then. I think that we all have different experiences of grace in our lives. It calls us to be who we are. Sometimes it's hard to know who we are because there's so many things on top of it. But I encourage you as you think about grace, you're not wretched. You're a beloved child of God. You were called to be the authentic expression of who you are. And grace calls you to that. And sometimes it takes a theology professor. Sometimes it takes counseling. Sometimes it's just a light that goes off. But as you contemplate grace and about what it means to you, allow it to work in you, to move you to be, who you are called to be.